Okay, so one of the things that I had mentioned I will try to do is to make a short review of sketching the gradient function, showing a few more examples of this. And here I've got an example. Here we've got a graph, y equals f of x. This is y equals f of x. We don't know what the function is. And we want to draw y equals f dash of x on this second axis. So the question mentions um, yeah, the curve has turning points P, Q and R which have X coordinates 1, 2 and 3 respectively sketch the, curve, sketch the curve with Y equals F dash of X for 0, X between 0 and 3 on your sketch show clearly any points where the curve crosses or meets the X axis okay what I'm going to assume is I'm going to, I'm going to add to this question okay I'm going to add something to this question and I'm going to say that this part just to make it more interesting I'm going to say that this part here is an asymptote. That x on this side after 3 is an asymptote to the curve. So that in case you get a question like that, let's choose black. So in this section here I'm changing the question slightly so that this becomes an asymptote. Okay, so it's not very nicely drawn. Um, but uh, let me try again. So let's go white first. I should have done this before I started. I just thought about it now before I was going to answer it. Just let's quickly do that. So this is now an asymptote. Okay, I think you get the idea. Now, let's just add something to the question. All right, so we're going to draw the gradient function on this, gra on this graph below for this particular curve. So as I said, the important things to look out for when you're doing um, gradient, gradient function sketching is you have to look out for the places um, where some major changes take place. Now the, the, the biggest changes are the turning point. So at P, which is when x equals 1, at Q, when x equals 2, and at R, when x equals 3, you see turning points. So I know at the turning point, the gradient is equal to zero. So in these three points, I know for sure the gradient function has to pass through the x-axis. That's for certain. Okay. And the other important changes to look for are what are called the points of inflection. So for example, here the, gra the, the, the graph is, is, we know that it's a positive gradient. So I know it's going to be above the x-axis. It starts with a high gradient. It's very steep, so it's going to start high. But the, it gets less and less, less and less steep, so it's going, it's getting, the gradient is getting smaller and smaller, but it's still positive until the gradient reaches zero. After this point, it becomes negative. Then it starts to get more steep in the negative, so it's going to go, it's going to drop further. The value of the gradient is going to get more and more negative, okay, because it's becoming more steep in the negative side. But then there reaches a point somewhere in this region here where the graph stops, um, where the gradient stops decreasing and it starts to increase again. But it's still negative, it's still below the x-axis, but its value starts to increase. Its value goes from like something steep to shallower to shallower until it gets to zero again. So we know that at this point there's another important okay, thing happening. Something important in the gradient function is going to happen. The gradient is going to stop falling and it's going to start rising. It's going to stop falling and it's going to start rising until it reaches zero again at Q. And then we see again, somewhere between Q and R. Okay, now between Q, Q and R is positive again. So it's going to go up, it's going to become zero, it's going to become positive. It's going to stay positive until it reaches R. Because R it turns again, it becomes negative, the gradient becomes negative. So after R is going to come down here again. But you can see that the gradient is zero and then it gets bigger and then it gets bigger then it gets bigger and then at a certain point it starts to get smaller again it starts to go towards zero again it starts to get shallower so there's another important thing happening at this point which is a point of inflection okay it doesn't reach zero here but it reaches a minimum point sorry it reaches a maximum point it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger then it starts to get smaller so it reaches a maximum point and then it starts getting smaller and smaller until the gradient becomes zero at this point. And then what happens here? The gradient is negative. So it's going to come down here. The gradient is negative. 
okay, it becomes more negative, and then you see again there's a point of inflection somewhere here as well. It's getting more negative, then it starts to get less negative. It's still negative, it's still negative, but it gets less negative. That's all. What's happened there? Sorry about that. So over here it gets less negative. So it's another point of inflection somewhere over here. So it starts to get like going like this and then like that. So see it's getting, it's becoming, uh, it's, it's dropping and then it starts to rise again. But it is a negative gradient so it will be below the x-axis. So that's another point where there is going to be some sort of a, something happening. Okay, so with these, with these points here, the gradient hasn't become zero because it's, it's not horizontal. Tangent won't be horizontal. Okay, but these three points, the gradient is going to cross the x-axis. Okay, here that it's going to be like either a maximum or a minimum. Okay, so once you realize that, that this is going to be here, it's, it's falling and then it rises again. So this is going to be minimum. Here the gradient is negative, so it's going to be down here. The minimum is going to be down here somewhere. You don't know its value, it doesn't matter as long as you mark it. And this point here between Q and R, the gradient is rising, then it starts to fall. The gradient is getting bigger, then it gets smaller. Okay, so it's a positive gradient here, so it's above the x-axis, but the gradient's getting bigger, and then it starts to get smaller again. So there's going to be a, a positive, there's going to be like a maximum point here. And then down here, it's negative gradient, so it's going to be below the x-axis. It's, it's falling, and then it starts to get less steep and it starts to get increased. The gradient starts to get bigger again. So there's going to be another turning point here somewhere where the gradient is getting smaller and then it starts to rise. Okay, and the gradient starts to get closer and closer to zero but it doesn't reach it. So once you've done that, it's pretty easy now to draw the graph. You can see what's happening with these points. It's almost like plotting points. Except you don't know how far to draw these up and down but it's just a sketch. So you can see, if we just keep that in view so we can see what's happening. So you can see that what's happening is the gradient starts off positive and very high. So it starts off positive and very high, somewhere up here. Okay, I don't know what the value is, but some positive and very high. And then it's, the gradient gets smaller. It's falling, it's getting lost, less and less and less. See, the gradient is getting less and less and less. Okay, it's positive, it's above the x-axis, but it's getting shallower. You see, the gradient is getting shallow, so it's going to come down. It's going to hit zero at P. So this is where P is, it hits zero at P. Okay, and then it continues down here. So there's a gradient here. Now the gradient is negative. After P, the gradient is negative. That's why it's crossed over to the negative side. It's below the x-axis now. Okay, and it's falling. It's falling, it's getting more and more negative until it reaches this point where it stops falling and it starts to rise. The gradient starts to get bigger. I'm not saying that this graph is rising. I'm saying the gradient is starting to now increase after this. So it reaches a minimum point here, then it starts to increase, it starts to head back towards zero again. Okay, at the point Q, it hits zero again. Okay, it's a zero gradient, and then after Q, the gradient becomes positive, so it goes above the x-axis. And it's rising until that point where it starts to fall again. Okay, it starts to, it's, it's riding, it's rising, it reaches its maximum, Value, it's not zero. The, the value of the gradient is not a maximum, it's not zero because it's you know, if you draw a tangent, it won't be zero, but that's the maximum it reaches in this area. And then it starts, the gradient starts to get less and less, but it's still positive, it's still positive until it becomes zero at r. And then after r, it's negative again and it starts to fall, it starts to fall until it reaches this point here. So, this is r. So it reaches this point here where the gradient is falling, then it starts to get bigger, it starts to get shallow, it starts to move towards zero. The gradient's getting closer to zero, but it's not reaching it, so it's like an asymptote there as well. Okay, I added that asymptote myself just to show you. So that's an example of how to deal with drawing the gradient function. Okay, that's an example of how to deal with drawing the gradient function. Okay, um, that's one example. Another example is from the book. This is from exercise 7F in the, I, in, in the, in the book for the... Um, so 7F, I think. Exercise 7F from the IAL P2 book. Okay, I'm going to probably do a proper thing on the exercise of this, but somebody asked me to draw the, gra uh, the gradient function for this. So what's happening here? On this side, the gradient is negative. So it's definitely going to go below the x-axis. 
Okay, the gradient is negative. Now the gradient starts off on this side, okay, as going to coming away from zero. So it's the gradient is negative, so it's below the x-axis for sure. Okay, and it starts off, okay, um, close to zero. Okay, so it's but it's getting the gradient is getting more and more negative. It's, it's decreasing. The gradient is getting less. At this point here, that's a point of inflection. It's a negative gradient, so somewhere down here is a point of inflection where the gradient is negative, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it starts to increase again. So this will be a minimum point, start to increase. Okay, but it's still negative, so still below the x-axis. In fact, the whole of this graph, the gradient function is going to be below the x-axis. Okay, this is y f dash of x, and this is y equal f of x. Okay, so the whole of this section of the graph, the whole of the graph is going to be below the x-axis, but it's going to be somewhere where it's um, close to zero, so the gradient is going to be close to the x-axis, but not touching it. It looks like it's an asymptote, so it will never, it will never actually become horizontal, because it will never touch the, the, the line y equals 4, so it's going to be always close to a zero gradient. The, close, the further away you go, the closer it is to the x-axis, the closer it is to being horizontal, but it won't be ever horizontal. It's falling, it's falling, and then at O, it reaches its minimum value. Okay, it stops dropping. It's, see, the gradient is getting more and more negative. Then it, the, the, the gradient goes less negative. So it's still negative, but it's now starting to, the gradient is starting to increase, and it's getting, what's happening is it's moving towards this asymptote, so it's moving towards becoming zero. So it's going to go like this. It's moving towards going towards zero. And there you have your y equals f dash of x. That's how you would draw that. So just think about um, here, the only, you don't have any turning points here, but you have something close to a turning point there. The closer it goes to y equals 4 and y equals minus 4. All right? So that means the gradient gets close to 0 and close to 0, but it's always negative. It's always a negative gradient here, always below the x-axis. But it's falling, so it's, the gradient is falling until it reaches a minimum value, then the gradient starts to rise but it's still negative, still below the x-axis. Okay, so I hope that is clear, and um, that helps you with your exam in a few hours, actually.